vote could raise fees between three to ten dollars per square foot. Most of the parklets are between the 400 and 1300 blocks of State Street. Restaurant and business owners we spoke with hope that the council will vote on a reasonable fee structure that will keep the promenade profitable. We can't go back. If you have a better idea, we can listen. But I haven't heard one. And the promenade is the best idea anyone's come up with. I mean, we, we have so many people coming in here. Spring break was amazing. We've got the cruise ship people coming in. So I think it's made it a lot more friendly. It was the right thing to do at the time. Now it's the right thing going forward. And I think that's the, that's the answer that's uh, the, the $64,000 question. The mayor wanted the council to set the rate weeks ago. City staff says that the fees would cover the cost of maintaining the street. A local nonprofit serving homeless people in Santa Barbara is seeing progress with one of its newest programs. Santa Barbara Path launched its new outreach program last September, and so far the team has brought in dozens of people experiencing homelessness off the streets. The program connects people to the resources they need with the goal of getting them into stable housing. Since the inception, we've had 40 individuals move off the street and into shelter, with five of them being housed directly using, you know, PATH uh, permanent supportive housing or rapid rehousing. Also to help the entire neighborhood, Milpa's neighborhood, with the issues that they're facing. The outreach program is in need of a vehicle to help participants get to their appointments. For information on how you can help support Santa Barbara PATH, visit our website or mobile app. Turning now to politics, the U.S. hit its debt ceiling in January, and since then, the Treasury Department has been keeping the nation afloat financially. Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he has enough support to get his debt limit legislation through the expected House vote this week. McCarthy's bill includes $1.5 trillion hike to the debt ceiling, but with cuts to the domestic spending programs. President Joe Biden said he will only agree to a cut-free proposal and blasted McCarthy's bill, saying it would, quote, make it easier for the wealthy to cheat on taxes, end quote. Some analysts say a debt ceiling breach could cost the U.S. millions of jobs and do long-term damage to the economy. News around the world, the State Department says it has reached an agreement with the warring factions in Sudan to begin a three-day ceasefire beginning at midnight. If it holds, it may provide a window of opportunity for Americans trapped in the country to escape. Nicole Skanga is at the White House with the latest. The Pentagon says it is deploying two U.S. Navy ships near Sudan to potentially help with evacuations. U.S. Africa Command and the Department of Defense continue to work closely with State Department which has the lead for helping American citizens wishing to depart Sudan. Several dozen Americans traveled in a UN convoy from the capital city of Khartoum to Port Sudan in the east. We have deployed U.S. intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance assets to support land evacuation routes, which Americans are using, and we're moving naval assets within the region to provide support. The administration says it is working with foreign partners to help get Americans out now that the U.S. Embassy in Sudan has been evacuated. Saturday, SEAL Team 6 flew out of Camp Limigné in Djibouti and refueled in Ethiopia before reaching the embassy. In less than an hour, 87 people had been evacuated, first to Limigné, then on to Germany. I could not be prouder of our team, most of whom are now en route back to the United States. Violence continues to escalate in Sudan as rival generals battle for power. The State Department says the majority of Americans there are dual citizens who have not asked to leave. Nicole Skangas, the White House. And back here at home in the states, the first time in years, California will provide 100% of the water requested by cities and farms across the state. The series of storms this winter filled reservoirs and led to record-breaking snowpacks. The state water project will provide all the water requested by 29 water agencies, serving 27 million customers throughout California. San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura County water districts are all on that list. The last time the state agency fully met wa uh, water requests was back in 2006. A big fire broke out during a show at Disneyland this weekend. Oh my God, uh, a fire! A 45-foot fire-breathing dragon caught fire during the park's Fantasmic show Saturday night. Disney says Anaheim Fire and Rescue put it out quickly. Cast members and guests evacuated Tom Sawyer Island and areas around the fire due to smoke and wind. 
Investigators and park officials are working to figure out what went wrong. Luckily, no one was hurt. Still ahead on your news channel, live at 430, we'll hear from the Athletes of the Week at the Santa Barbara Athletic Roundtable. It finally happened. Green Bay trades four-time NFL MVP quarterback Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets in a deal that involves six draft picks. Noteworthy in the trade is the Packers and Jets swap number one draft picks this year, and the Packers will also get a 2024 first-round pick if Rodgers plays 65% of the time this season. Otherwise, it's a second-rounder. Rodgers announced more than a month ago that he wanted to leave Green Bay and join the Jets. The 39-year-old Rodgers led the Packers to the playoffs 11 times in his 15 seasons there, winning one Super Bowl. Green Bay will now turn to Jordan Love who, to lead the offense. Second to final Santa Barbara Athletic Roundtable luncheon of the school year was today at Harry's. Several honors were handed out. The female athlete of the week is Isabella Orlando, who led Santa Barbara City College swimming to the Western State Conference Championship. Orlando set three league and school records in the 100 butterfly, 100 backstroke, and 200 backstroke. The male athlete of the week is Brendan Chicada, who helped San Marcos baseball to two wins over Santa Barbara as the Royals clinched their third straight Channel League championship. Coming in this year, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are talking like, yeah, you guys lost your, like, all your seniors, like, they were, like, your entire team, like, you won't be the same team you will be this year, but this fall we, in winter we got to work and we proved them wrong. I took a full year off of swimming and I've only been back into it for like four months um, and I was shocked I went best time so that was really cool. Track standout Daniel Rubin was named Westmont College Scholar Athlete of the Year. Providence High School multi-sport athlete Telio Zermeno received the Phil Womble Ethics in Sports Award. UCSB slugger Brock Mortensen was named Big West Field Player of the Week after hitting two home runs with five runs batted in and a three-game sweep at UC San Diego. Also from that series, Gaucho's Jared Sundstrom made news with his home run that hit the trolley that was passing by in San Diego. Tough to see the ball, but it did smack off that trolley. Cal Poly men's basketball adds point guard Jared Hyder. He's a grad transfer from Cal. That's sports. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I'm going to be speaking. Can you hear me? Can I see what it looks like? Awesome. Thank you.
One local organization is committed to improving the health of low-income communities and creating the next generation of urban farmers. All right, News Channel reporter Mina Wahab joins us in studio with a look at how they are planting the seeds for a food revolution. The organization is called the Terrace Foundation. They believe that everyone deserves equal access to healthy eating options and freedom from food insecurity. That's why they work to empower people to grow their own food. Now they're connecting with Pilgrim Terrace Cooperative Homes to empower seniors and disabled people to live a life that prioritizes healthy nutrition, mental and physical activity, and social interaction. Residents here get access to one free healthy nutritious meal a day, all made from the fresh ingredients on the urban farm right in their collective backyard. 516,000 senior citizens are suffering from malnutrition in our county. Not right. Eating nutritional food, it's, it's so necessary to, for the body and to keep on going and, uh, and we have it here. Terrace Foundation founder John Jeffries says the model here is harvest to plate, not farm to table. This means the ingredients are even fresher and retain more of their nutritional value. Workers here say anyone can have access to the urban farm and lunch meals by becoming a member. The proceeds go directly back into feeding the community. Live in studio, I'm News Channel reporter Mina Wahab.